Well, this is uh, David Wood again from Act 17. Again, Nabil and I are here at ISNA, the Islamic Society of North America's national convention. Uh, I want to say that we've got along great with the people here. The people here have been uh, the exact opposite of some of the Muslims we ran into in Dearborn, Michigan. It's been fun, and uh, everyone has been very kind. Uh, one of the things that have been bothering Nabil and I as we've, we've uh, Gone, all, gone to some of the presentations is that we hear what they're telling us and yet we know what the Muslim sources say and so we notice a conflict and we're trying to get people to address this conflict. We've, we've, we've asked some questions, we haven't gotten any good answers. So uh, anyone, anyone out there who has answers to some basic issues, uh, we'd love to hear them. You can contact us with, contact us with them. Uh, you can post them on our blog. You could uh, invite us to come uh, to a dialogue with you. We'd love to have a dialogue on these issues. Uh, just to give an example, there's a sign here what Islam teaches, and this is a, a perfect example of uh, some of the things we're talking about. The religion of peace teaches tolerance. Now, what exactly do they mean by tolerance? For instance, in Sahih Muslim, Muhammad says, I will expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and will not leave any but Muslims. Does this sound like a man who envisions um, society with Christians and Muslims and Jews living together in harmony. No, this is, there has to be some kind of complete uh, separation. Uh, we have forgiveness. Well, we look to the sources and we see something very different. For instance, in Sahih Muslim, uh, a woman comes to Muhammad and says, uh, I've committed adultery. How do I get forgiveness? Muhammad says, well, wait, see if you're pregnant. She comes back and says that she is pregnant. He says, wait until the, the baby's delivered. She waits until the baby's delivered and comes back. He says, wait until you've weaned the baby. She comes back after he's been weaned and he says, pick up stones, pick up stones. Uh, and so she was stoned to death. Now, if that's forgiveness, what do you mean by forgiveness? Over and over again in the Muslim sources, we see people being killed for things that we would consider very uh, minor offenses, not adultery, that would be a major offense, but for comparatively minor things. Uh, so what exactly do you mean by forgiveness? Honesty. You ever heard of taqiyya? You ever heard of taqiyya? According to the Quran, uh, if you're a Muslim and you're outnumbered around people, uh, you're not allowed to be friends with Christians and Jews, but if you're in a society where you're outnumbered, you can pretend to be peaceful. You can pretend to be peaceful. Uh, this is sheer deception. And as Ibn Kathir comments on that, the taqiyya is allowed till the day of resurrection. It's that honesty. Uh, love. According to the Quran, God does not love unbelievers. That's me. Uh, how can you say Islam promotes uh, love when God does not love anyone but good Muslims? Uh, care. Care for whom? Uh, one time, uh, Muhammad was ordering a man to be executed for rebelling against him, and the man said, Muhammad, uh, who's going to take care of my family? Muhammad said, hell. Uh, is this an example of how you care for someone? Uh, communication. There is no open communication as far as dialoguing back and forth with open criticisms in Islam. Uh, according to Muhammad, you would have to be killed if you openly criticize Muhammad. So you can have sort of lower level dialogues, but this isn't the sort of uh, communication that, that, that we would expect to be consistent with the West. And finally, giving respect to others. What, what does Muhammad say? Do not give the Jews and the Christians the greeting first. Force them to the narrowest part of the road. Uh, I can't. I don't have, I don't have is that giving respect to them? No. What do we read in Surah uh, 929? That we are to, Christians and Jews, are to feel ourselves subdued by paying the jizya. According to the Muslim commentators, this means that we have to crawl to them on all fours while they slap us on the back of their necks. So, notice the massive difference. Uh, yes, I can see why why a Muslim might say every one of these things. You could say that Islam promotes love, but when you just put, the, put it up there as a sign, it's misleading. It acts as if it's promoting love towards everyone, when it doesn't. It promotes love towards some, not towards everyone. Uh, it promotes forgiveness towards some, but not towards everyone. It promotes all of these things to some extent, but not the way the sign makes it sound. So the sign makes it sound as if uh, Islam is completely consistent with uh, Western democracy and Western values and all these things that we hold so dearly. When we turn to the Muslim sources, we get a different picture, and uh, it would just be good to see uh, a bit of clarification on what Islam teaches about all these things. We'll be glad to help 
out with that, and we hope Muslims will do the same. Thanks. This is David Wood, Act 17.